Okay, let's talk about net present value. Net present value is a financial evaluation tool to determine if a project is worth pursuing or to compare different projects against each other. Now, let's just say you, you, know, you had a project. We might draw a cash flow diagram that would look like this. When we begin the project, we have to spend some money. And basically, that money is a cost. And this diagram somewhat shows you that if it's a cost, it's an arrow going down. And the x-axis here, these are years, one, two, and three. And so let's say we spend some money up front. And in return, we get, say, $500 every year in savings. So we have $500 the first year, $500 the second year, and $500 the third year. So that's our cash flow diagram. That's what our project looks like. But we all know that money in the future is not worth as much as money today. So what we want to do is basically move these $500 back in time and estimate what their value would be today. Now this estimate, we would call this the P positive. That would be the present value of the positive cash flows. And the reason we're going after this thing called net present value, the reason we call it net, because it really equals the P positive minus the cost, okay? So, you know, ultimately, we're gonna move this money back in time, figure out what the estimated value of it is today. That would be this dashed line here, it's estimated. And we're gonna compare that against the cost, and hopefully, we want projects that have a positive net present value. If a project has a negative net present value, that means it's kind of like saying, hey, let's do the project. It's equivalent to losing money, which isn't going to be very popular. Now, that's the first concept. Now, the second concept is that when we move this money back in time, it's actually going to shrink a little bit. That's because, you know, interest rates and things affect how money grows over time. For example, you know, down here at the bottom, if we had, say, a sum of money, say, I don't know, $1,000, and you put that in the bank, over time, that money should grow to be something much greater, say, in 10 years. What would it be worth in 10 years? Who knows? Maybe 1500 I don't know. I'm just making this up. The amount that it's worth is somewhat dependent on the interest rate. And the interest rate basically is somewhat like the slope of this line. If you had a higher interest rate, your money would grow you know, to be even a greater amount. If you had, though, a less of an interest rate, you know, maybe you're down here, your money is not going to grow um, as much as you would like. And so that's kind of the, the deal with interest rates. And th it's the same principle. It's just that we're not moving forward in time. We're going to be moving backwards in time. And so in all of these cases, you know, the cases above, we basically have $500 that we're going to be moving backwards in time. And that money is actually going to shrink dependent on the percent discount rate. And that's a key concept that we'll go through later. But just to try to get this understanding at this point is that because we have this somewhat of a shrinkage, these $500 will be moving back individually and will actually be shrinking according to the discount rate that we apply. But they'll eventually all add up. Say this could be you know, the cash flow from year uh, one, and that's going to be added on to the cash flow from year two, and that's going to be added on to the cash flow for year three. And they're cumulatively going to add up to be the P positive. Now, we'll cover more of these concepts later, but that's the idea behind net present value. Hopefully you enjoyed it.